telling me what everybody yeah, said you. here, and I was driving down the road yeah. today that was coming to my Let's house. Take a note. I've kind of got a mental picture, but I'm not. Good. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to go ahead and call this um, meeting to order. I'd like to welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. We've got a very special day. We've got some uh, new members and some guest speakers and some reports. So we have a, uh, a full schedule for today. So again, thank all of you for, for joining us today. Um, I'd like to welcome... Um, a couple of new members. I'd like to welcome Lindsay Thomas, and Lindsay join us, joins us as the director of the authority. And as a token of our appreciation for you joining our team, I have a nice little gift for you. I'll open it up, but it's a city pin, so thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. And then we also have as a as a uh, shadow member uh, Rick Young. Rick, thank you for joining us, and if you'll please pass this. Uh, we certainly appreciate you joining our team, and, and hopefully you'll be a, a good part of this, uh, uh, this board as we continue to do our work, uh, not only to put heads on beds in, in our city, but also to improve the activities and, and uh, events that go on within our city to promote tourism and ultimately uh, increase economic development locally. So thank you for joining us. Um, um, first uh, order of business is to the adopt the agenda and before we get that motion I would like to add uh, an agenda item which will be the approval of the Viamark contract under the tourism fund this is more of a formality we've actually uh, agreed to it at a prior meeting but uh, we've got to we've got to make John Carter happy so we will do it appropriately uh, as requested so we would like to add that as part of the agenda item so whoever makes the motion to agenda I will need that that item added please I make the motion to add via mark to our agenda okay thank, second. thank you thank you I have a motion and a second any further discussion all in yeah, yes one thing. Fanny look at Lindsay Lindsay Thomas who was elected the 17th of this year and unexpired term in in June 2013. Mm-hmm. Should be 2014. 14. Yeah, 14. Yeah. So we need to make that correction, ah. and we can uh, change that as part of the okay. the minutes. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Okay. Before we, um, well, actually, let, let's do the minutes. Um, before you, you have the authority minutes for our last meeting. You've received it via email as well. Um, if there's any <laughs> corrections, which we have one, if we'll take note of that. If there's no other corrections to be made, um, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the meeting minutes. Have, so moved. 
I have a motion from Ms. Coleman. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Uh, before we move on, I'd like to ask uh, Lindsay and Rick if you just take a, two seconds to tell us who you are and who, who you're with and uh, just a, a very quick introduction would be nice. Sure, I'll start. I'm Lindsay Thomas. I'm the general manager at the Hampton Inn and Suites, the newest hotel in the city, uh, right behind the Carolina Ale House, if you're familiar with that end of mm -hmm. Western. And I'm excited to be here. I also um, serve on the Tourism Advisory Committee for the city, so this is uh, new but not unfamiliar, so I'm excited to be here. Great. Thank you, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rick Young, I'm the area GM for two properties, uh, the Suburban Hotel, which is right down the street, and for the Mainstay Suites, which is right near the, the uh, di right behind the Denny's. And I'm also thankful to be here. Thank you. We appreciate y'all being with us today. Um, again, um, we have a very special guest today as we move on. Um, we have with us today the North Carolina Restaurant and Lodging Association President, uh, Lynn Minges. Is Minges. That Minges. That, that's correct. Um, today she, she's going to speak with us. Um, she um, is prepared to discuss the association and its work with the members of the authority. So without further ado, Lynn, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. And uh, the floor is yours. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be here today in this amazing facility. I don't think I've ever been in this town hall. Must be relatively new, but just gorgeous driving in. Very, very impressive, as is the city of Jacksonville that I come through and eat in your restaurants and pop in some of your retail establishments from time to time. I have a home um, at Emerald Isle, near Emerald Isle, Pine Knoll Shores, and my husband and I come through here about every weekend. But I, like many people uh, passing through, stop and spend money in your community, and then others of them come and stay, and you all know what that means to your community. So um, congratulations for the great work that you're doing. I just want to make one quick comment. In preparing for this meeting last night and just looking through the materials that Glenn sent me, I've got to tell you people that I have never been to a meeting in my entire 20 years that was this organized and <laughs> and, and well laid out and prepared. You guys mean business when you come together. And, um, we got so a good organizer. Down. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm serious. I um, I need to hire him to come help us at the Restaurant oh, no. Lodging Association. <laughs> this is uh, very, very impressive, and you guys are doing great things. Um, as Michael mentioned when he introduced me, I have uh, spent the past 20 years of my career marketing and promoting travel and tourism in this state. Um, North Carolina is an incredible state to market and promote, as is this destination and others around our state. We're blessed, uh, really, from the mountains through the Piedmont to the coast to have just amazing travel and tourism product. And when compared to what we see in other places around the country, we are probably better positioned than many, many other states to take advantage of visitors and their spending. And the reason for that is, is multifold. It's probably because we have such diverse product in the state and we can be lots of things to lots of different people. Um, just to juxtapose that, if you look at our neighbors in South Carolina, they have you know amazing beaches. Uh, or you look in Florida and they have amazing beaches. But we have, you know, 300 miles of pristine coastline that are largely pretty well preserved and taken care of. We have wonderful cities and communities, small towns. Uh, we have the highest mountains in the eastern United States, and they're pretty well protected with a, a vast array of both national parks and then, as you all have in, in Onslow County, um, state parks as well. We um, have rich culture and heritage that we've done a good job, I think, of protecting and promoting, and you all are doing that in incredible ways in this community with your military heritage. Um, we have ha done a great job of recruiting sporting events. That is a particular strength of this community and one thing that you're reaping the benefits of in big ways. And I will say that even in the downturn of the economy when other kinds of tourism became a little bit soft, and, and by and large we've done pretty well even in the height of the recession, but even during the toughest times, uh, sporting events continue to be strong. And a large part of that is because um, when tournaments happen, you know, folks aren't going to look at their kids and say, I'm sorry, honey, you can't go to the Little League tournament or to the soccer tournament or whatever. They go on and they find a way to do that. And they fill your hotels uh, and often in times that they wouldn't be otherwise booked. And so that's been good business and something you all have reaped in big ways. Um, we have done a pretty good job of getting motor coaches into the community and you all probably see a fair amount of those coming in. You get family reunions and military reunions, um, and that's another strategy for, for getting people in your community and across our state. 
And so uh, meetings and conventions fill parts of our states, like we saw in Charlotte with the Democratic National Convention, you know, just a huge influx of spending there. And so as we look statewide and even community by community, it's all those things working together that makes this state pretty well positioned for continued success um, in terms of hospitality. Last year, visitors coming into the state spent $19.4 billion. Um, that generated over a billion dollars in state tax revenue and employed 200,000 North Carolinians. Um, but the problem I saw in marketing and promoting the state for 20 years was that the respect the travel and tourism industry, the hospitality industry gets, is not commensurate with the economic uh, benefits that it generates for the state. And that is a challenge we face statewide and that you all probably face here in your community is trying to help folks understand the real benefits and the opportunity of tourism and what those visitor dollars can, mean, can and do mean in your community. Uh, because the 19.4 is a big number, I think sometimes it's good to, to put that in something that we can grasp because I don't even know 19.4 billion, that's just hard for me to get my hands around. Um, but literally that means that every single day in North Carolina, visitors who choose to come to the state spend $53 million every day. Today while we're here, or during the course of this day, $53 million of new money will come into the state of North Carolina. Those visitors and that spending will generate $4 million in state tax revenue alone. So you see that um, as the General Assembly today, not different than five years ago and 10 years before that, there's never enough state money to do all the kinds of things to pay teachers and build highways and do all the kinds of things that we would like to see done. But this industry is pumping more and more dollars into the state tax coffers every year. And we've done that for as long as I've been in the business, 20 years, we've done that. And you all have done that in this community as well. Um, just noodling on the numbers a little bit in preparation for today, um, last year you all saw in this county, and I realize you've got Jackson and then you've got Onslow County, but, in, but the state only looks at you know the aggregate county by county, looking at 100 counties. But in um, Onslow County, you all generated $203 million in spending. And just like at the state <coughs> level, you've seen that amount increase year after year after year. So that's good business. To put it in perspective for you, and this is staggering, do you know that every day in this county, visitors spend, are you ready? $557,000 every day. Wow, That's amazing, isn't it? I mean, sometimes we don't think about it in those terms, but if you just do the math and you say, okay, on an annual basis, then you take it by, per day. And then if you look at the local tax revenues, forgetting the state tax revenues that everybody benefits from, but just your local taxes, tax revenues from that spending is over $20,000 a day, every day. And um, if you think about it, those people who spend money in this community, those visitors, are not from here. These are people who are coming to this community. They choose to be here. They come into the community. They could go other places, but they come here for, some of them for business, honestly, some of them for uh, groups or marathons, events, things that you're having here. Maybe they're passing through, whatever it is, for whatever reason, you're getting those dollars in your community. They're spending money in your hotels, they're eating in your restaurants. They're buying gas in your stores. Uh, they're running over to pick up some toothpaste and medicine at your local drug store. They're buying uh, things in your retail stores. And hopefully they're getting a good impression of your community and they're gonna send other people or come back themselves or retire here or uh, invest in a business here if we're lucky. Um, so that's you know really, really good business. Um, but we have to work harder and smarter to tell that story to folks who sometimes don't understand the power of tourism and the fact that it really is an economic engine in communities. Um, I've worked with legislators for many, many years. I've worked with five governors and, no, three governors, two of them two times, five cabinet secretaries. Um, you know, I don't know that they ever fully embrace tourism as, you know, as I would like to see them do that. And so I think it's important <coughs> for us to continue to tell the stories about, you know, what we're doing in, in around the state and particularly in this community. Um, one of the most exciting things about the role that I'm playing now is that I've kept, kind of taken off my uh, hat as a state employee after 20 years of, of working 
to market and promote the state, and I'm now president and CEO of the North Carolina Restaurant and Lodging Association. So I know I've got two hoteliers here. Restaurant to other hoteliers, other restaurant tours? Three. Any restaurants? You? So uh, you guys know the challenges that you face every day, and um, they are many. They're, they're, you know, they're many and they're varied. And so in the new role that I'm in, I'm working hard alongside you all to mark, I mean, not to market so much, but to protect and advocate for your interest every day. Um, small business owners, folks who earn their living in the hospitality industry face a myriad of challenges. And so what we work to do, and you all as a, a TDA are members of our association, uh, what we work to do is to help support them in ways that they probably don't even fully understand. If you saw what happens in the General Assembly every day and the kinds of bills that a legislator wants to introduce and act on, I mean, you would just die. And so um, we work there every day to make sure that they understand what impact that law or that change or that regulation might mean to our businesses. And so we advocate for our, our business, our members. Um, we work to educate them and inform them on new policy changes, things they ought to be aware of. And so we do that through e-blast and various communication tools. Uh, we provide opportunities for networking so that they can talk with peers around the, the state um, restaurateurs often, you know, run their restaurant, but there may be another one somewhere in a different part of the state who's facing some of the same challenges. You don't compete, but you can complement each other. And so a lot of times we facilitate those kinds of uh, learning opportunities and networking and sharing. Uh, and then we offer some cost savings to our members uh, where they can get things, uh, training and other kinds of things at discounted rates that often more than pay for their, their membership. I want to hit just a few highlights of some of the issues that we've been working on recently um and i turn on cnn on my car coming down here and you might imagine the only thing you're hearing out of cnn right now is the uh, health care debate and the government shutdown and the defunding health care and you know what a mess there is in washington right now but we're watching all that pretty closely because we're hearing from our members and you all know this that the affordable health care act is having uh, is presenting huge challenges unique challenges for the hospitality industry in particular as any employer with 50 or more employees suddenly has to provide health insurance for all their employees. Now that sounds like a good thing, and I, for one, you know, believe that people ought to have health insurance. It's, it's you know, a right, but for many of our members, we're hearing that they hire seasonal employees, and so that becomes squirrely. And then they've got part-time employees, and then they've got, uh, you know, lots of folks who work 20 hours, but they have to aggregate that, so if it's more than 50, They've got to provide health care. And some of these workers, you know, are making minimum wage or a little bit above that. And the cost of providing health care sometimes is, you know, a huge additional, uh, an added burden to their labor cost uh, when these employees are, you know, don't make a lot to begin with. And so those are some of the challenges that we're trying to work through on behalf of our members. Um, immigration reform is another one of those. Um, many of our, many of our employees tell me, that despite the fact that we've got nine and a half percent unemployment in the state, they can't find people to fill the jobs that they post. And I heard from one hotelier recently that that was a challenge of his because when he brings these, when, when people apply for the job, they have to run them through the E-Verify system and they often kick out. And these are people who want to work and they can't get anybody else to fill the job and they can't hire them. And so, you know, that's a challenge we're trying to work through with Congress. I've met with nearly every member of Congress from North Carolina with members. We take, it's not me they want to hear from, they want to hear from members and what impact this is having on their businesses. And so, you know, all, we don't have a silver bullet, but what we're trying to say to them is we need people to work in our businesses and we need you to help us to find a way to either make them legal or give them some sort of status that allows them to work or or figure out something, but just don't let these people sit here in limbo. We need to figure out some solutions. And so we're working hard with, um, with members of Congress and also with our national affiliates with the, North, with the National Restaurant Association, we're their local arm, they're the National Restaurant Association, and the American Hotel and Lodging Association on those kinds of issues. Um, we work very closely every day with the North Carolina, uh, yeah, North Carolina Department of uh, Public Health and for those of you in the hospitality industry, you know that um, probably your greatest fear is the day that you're getting inspected, that they walk in to inspect. And even though you're, it's like being audited, you know, it's just your worst nightmare. Um, not because you're doing anything wrong, but because the rules and regulations change so frequently. And sometimes because of no fault of your own, you'll be in violation and get points deducted. And then they post that horrible grade that everybody that walks in sees. And it's because they change the 
something weird like the temperature of blah, blah, blah. You know, I heard the other day that, that some of the temperatures that they're requiring for uh, food storage is ridiculously, is different, I, I don't know. But anyway, those kinds of things, that, uh, permitting and change, changes and things like that can catch members off guard. And so we work hard to try to get advance notice of those kinds of rules and regulations and to communicate those to our members so that we um, prepare them. And then sometimes when we don't agree with uh, the findings of the local health department, we have a real good relationship with the, uh, the health department, the public health department in Raleigh, and we meet with them pretty regularly and we advocate on behalf of our members. So if there's a, so a place that we have a dip, that you and a local health department inspector have a disagreement, we'll intervene and be your advocate and say, can you just cut them a break this time and maybe come back and work with them? And they didn't know this. And so sometimes we can work on your behalf in that way. Um, so those are just some of the things we're working on. Um, a recent <coughs> bill that I'll tell you just a little bit about, you all probably read in the papers recently about carbon, about deaths up in the Boone area, carbon monoxide deaths, <coughs> tragic, awful kind of thing. And so what happened in the General Assembly is that they knee-jerk reaction as they often did and they were in the, on TV and they were saying that we are gonna not ever let this happen in North Carolina again. We're gonna require that every hotel room in this state install a carbon monoxide detector. Mm. And we're like, what, excuse me, what? Think about that for a minute. There are 4,000 lodging properties in North Carolina, many of them with 100 rooms, some of them like the Grove Park Inn with 520 rooms. It's a 100-year-old building, the, the Grove Park Inn, for example. Um, there are a couple of thousand room properties. Can you even imagine what it would have been like to try to install carbon monoxide detectors in every single hotel room in North Carolina? And they wanted it done by next Tuesday, October 1. And so we fought and fought and fought. And this is in the waning days of the legislature. I mean, they were down to the last three days of session, and that was the law. And we fought and fought and fought. And finally, we got them to agree to back down and say, okay, in your home, and I have, you know, a, a gas fireplace in my home, and I have a gas stove. And in those two rooms, I do have a carbon monoxide detector, but not in every other room in the house. I don't need it upstairs in the bedroom. I don't have a gas source there. And so we negotiated that down, and they agreed to now make the requirement that you have to have a carbon monoxide detector in the room where you have a fossil fuel fuel burn, burning source or in a, where you share a wall with that room okay we can live with four now instead of 500 and so they agreed to those terms and um, for example tomorrow we're going to do a conference call with all of our hotel members around the state with the state fire marshal who will be implementing the code and rules and re regulations and the health department who will be coming in to do the inspections and it'll be an opportunity for Q&A with our members so that we know in advance what they're going to be looking for, how often they're going to come and monitor, what kinds of plug-ins are allowed and not allowed. And they, we have said, okay, they don't have to be hard, hardwired, they can plug in. But that's just an example of some of the kinds of things that we're doing to try to make life easier for our member businesses. And I probably rambled my 20 minutes, and so I'll pause oh, with that yeah. and see if you all have questions. I could talk forever, but... Um, Absolutely. It's a great industry and you all are doing great things and we just want to support you. Well, as most of you know, we are now members um, of, of the association mm -hmm. and so proud to be new members. Thank you. And I'll open up the floor for discussion. Anyone? Perhaps you talk about some of the other authorities or groups that are members. Obviously, the chamber is a member too because of their tourism efforts. What like groups to this might you have that are, are parts of your organization? As it is? We do have uh, several ch either chambers or convention visitors bureaus, tourism authorities. I would say maybe 20, <coughs> probably 20 around the state. Not enough. We're working on that. But um, many of them had not budgeted it for this year, and so we're hoping to get them in in, next, in the next budget cycle. Um, we have a number of hotels in the, in the, that are members uh, as well as a number of restaurants, but not enough. You know, it's just... It's a challenge to get out there and knock on doors and educate folks and get them on board. But a part of our strategy is that the more people, the more members we represent, the stronger we become and the bigger our stick when we go to meet with legislators about issues we care about. So well, that's really important. You know, just touching on some of the comments that, that you've made today, I mean, this board certainly recognizes the importance of tourism. Mm -hmm. As you can see can how tell. well organized yeah, we tell. are. We're, we're very passionate about our work and, and what, what we do here in our community to enhance the tourism. And, and you touched on sporting events. You know, we have a, a, a 
a huge community here that supports a lot of the sporting activities through our sports commission. And that's smart. And uh, not only do we support it, but we look through our whole efforts to see when the dips are and how we can enhance that through other activities mm -hmm. to fill in those gaps. And so uh, our work is pretty intricate and, and, and um, so it sort of ties in with, with what your comments were today. But getting back to some of your work in terms of small businesses and Obamacare, and this is probably yeah. for a different discussion, <laughs> but, but is the association educating a lot of the small businesses to, to help them uh, maneuver through? We are. Um, the National Restaurant Association has an amazing tool, uh, notification tool, that members can access. And so uh, you have to have that member ID to get in there, but um, <coughs> you can do that. And in addition to that, I have a number of books that basically is the same information. I'd be happy to share if anybody wants to pass me a business card or email me. Um, I'll mail those to you. But they really talk through the notification process and how to calculate whether you're a large employer and how to calculate, you know, your responsibilities and those kinds of things. It's a challenge. Do you have, are you going to have to provide health care? Yes. It's a huge challenge. And one of the other things that we, exciting things we've just done is entered into a contract with United Healthcare um, because they are, have a relationship with the National Association and all of our members have access to um, special rates for coverage for employees. So, you know, it's just, you certainly can go out there and find other rates, but that one, they will offer us a 3% discount on, or our members a 3% discount. So that's fairly significant. And that's for restaurants, for lodging properties, or for allied members. So- um, Is this outside the exchange program? Uh -huh, it's outside the exchange. Providers? So as a, as a, as a <laughs> employer, if you wanted to offer group health insurance for your employees, um, you can negotiate with them or anybody else, you know, your rate, mm -hmm. and then if you're a member, you get 3% off that. Mm -hmm. So for some people, you know, for one of my, one of my franchise owners um, in Charlotte, he was saying that, you know, his bill, he has five restaurants, and he said his bill for health insurance was going to be $200,000 a year. To take 3% off that, that could be significant. So um, those are some of the kind of things we're trying to offer. But health care is going to be a big challenge. Significant for big small challenge. business. Absolutely. Any questions for Lynn? Lynn, thank you so much thank for you. joining us. Thank you. I've enjoyed us. being and, with you. And if I can ask Michelle to help me, we have a small token of appreciation for you coming all this way. To, <laughs> it's not hard to, to twist my arm to come this way. <laughs> oh, wow. We have a little presentation oh, of something yeah. we hold near and dear. Great. How gorgeous. And that gorgeous. is a uh, portrait of our Freedom Fountain. Oh, like that is beautiful. Stand with us. That is beautiful. Uh, on behalf of the... Uh, Tourism Authority here, we'd like to present the uh, proud picture of the Freedom Fountain uh, to you. Thank you so much. Thank that you. is gorgeous. Thank and I've seen so that. Much. It is really impressive. And you need to come Thank by at night time because it's very impressive. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Coming. Thank you. You all Thank feel you free again. to call anytime we can help Let or if you have particular questions. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. About your business or, or anything. We're happy to help. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. You all have a great meeting, and I hope you get through that full agenda today. <laughs> <laughs> Stay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you very much. We Thank you so much. Okay, um, now we're going to go through our presentations, what we're calling flash reports, to kind of give some recaps. Um, first on the list is the Riverwalk Festival in New River Palooza. Um, we want to keep them in order, Glenn, or? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, I'll well, ask. We, I'll tell you what, we can go ahead, since they're seated yeah, right there, let's go ahead and do okay. that. Sorry we, about that. Uh, I apologize. I mean, we don't uh, want Sandy to have to move more than once. Okay. <laughs> Our first report will be, uh, Everett, do you want to uh, introduce yourself and your guests, please? Yes, my name is Everett Vaughn, and this is Anna Kinsley. We're with MCCS Marketing. Anna does marketing. I'm the markets and brand manager for MCCS. Welcome. Thank you. Um, Oh, I did it. I know. Very <laughs> impressed. Um, we're here to talk about the Grand Prix series, in particular the Marine Corps Half Marathon, which happened last Saturday. Um, to give you a background on the Grand Prix series, the Grand Prix series is a series of runs um, of held aboard the base, uh, Camp Johnson, Stone Bay um, areas, and they encompass a variety of races, extreme races, half marathons, 10Ks, etc. Um, in the past, 
the half marathon or the Grand Prix series has pretty much been self-contained and didn't really expand beyond the base as far as marketing materials because we didn't have the resources to actually support spending money on things that weren't mission readiness. So we didn't really market beyond the local community because we, we just didn't have the resources. Through the support of the tourism, we are able to do, do such things. And this year we had 828 runners. Last year we had 600 and something, 605, something like that, yeah. runners. So it's been growing each and every year. Um, one of the unique features is two years ago, the Marine Corps Half Marathon was just called the Grand Prix Series Half Marathon because we didn't have the rights to use the word Marine Corps. We wrote off to the trademark office and explained how many years we've been doing this and they warranted us to have the name the Marine Corps Half Marathon. Ironically, headquarters who has the Marine Corps Marathon now offers a half marathon and they have to call theirs the historic because we own the rights to the Marine Corps Half Marathon. But ours is more historic than that. Yes, <laughs> ours is before theirs, so we thought about changing <laughs> ours to prehistoric. <laughs> but we, we have it. Um, the, Marine, the Grand Prix Series has been around for over 25 plus years. So if you haven't been familiar with it, it's probably because we didn't have the resources to expand our marketing reach. Um, this is our logo that we use for our marketing materials. So I'm just going to go through this and give you some history on the event. This year we encompassed a pre-race pasta dinner. We did this many, many, many years ago, but due to funding and stuff, we had to cancel it. But we were able to reach out through the initiative, like I said, through the tourism, to partner with Home to Suites, and they partnered us up with Olive Garden to host a pre-pasta dinner where Olive Garden provided the pasta. The personnel from Home to Suites was behind that line, slinging the pasta, slapping the the um, salad on the plates and breadsticks. You see Glenn and Melody there and their their staff. It was and very Sergio. well. Sergio. Yes, Sergio. Sergio. Um, they, it was very well received and very well attended. I think we had over 200, and right around 230 people who attended. This was an add-on after we had all the materials out. So we're expecting next year when we do this to possibly be even larger because we did when we did the materials since it wasn't added on, we had to reach back to those who registered and say, hey, we're having a pasta dinner. But on that short notice to get that number of people out was great. Well, the best thing is it created fellowship among the runners. I mean, these people were able to get together, talk about the race. We had many first time runners who never experienced a Marine Corps installation. They never ran a half marathon before in their lives. Um, it was just a way of getting there. We had a map of the course that was out there. Um, and so it was, a, it was really a good time for camaraderie and, and, and meeting other people. This is one of the banners we had that we were able to purchase through the funding. And this is the back side of the half marathon banner. I'll show you the front side later on in the presentation. But our banners are double sided. One side has pictures, the other side has motivational focus. We have turned our marketing of the Grand Prix series into run with the Marines, experience the Marine lifestyle, run on a military installation, run on the courses that the Marines run on. And actually this banner was very, very popular. And almost everybody who was out there wanted to get pictures with the banner. Um, the kettlebell there was just for aesthetics to hold the banner down, so it really had nothing <laughs> to do with it. But the half marathon, like I said, I'll show you the front side later on the presentation, but this one, the slogan on that was run shoulder to shoulder with America's frontline U.S. Marines. Some of y'all might recognize that as a city fireman on the left Yes, there. that's Debbie Avalos and her husband. I can't remember his, his name. But we, sh we should yeah. mention that the running with the Marines aspect is obviously hitting the target because I think 25% of, um, of our population that we surveyed afterwards, and it's still ongoing now, um, have no military affiliation at all. So it's kind of reaching its target and mm -hmm. pulling people in. Yeah, and that's a good point. Any of the facts and figures we're giving you are facts and figures that are based on people who actually stayed in hotels. And it, oh, the survey's only been up for three days, and we had 170, well, 175 people respond already. So anything we're saying is really based only on 20% of that population. But that was interesting that 25% of those had no military affiliation. They weren't related to reservists. They weren't related to retirees or anything of that sort. Um, also at the hotel, we offered off-site packet pickup. Part of this was to help those people who don't have base access, you know, to get a board base. We had it at the, the site, an, an additional 25 people, I believe it was, 20 people, actually registered late registration there on site. They were able to pick up the packets. And the best thing is we, were, we didn't carry that many packets back for the day of the, for the race. The day of the race, we actually had an additional 40, 
40, not 40, 46, 46 additional people registered that day at the race site. We did work with PMO to smooth out the base access. Our registration forms do encompass. If you don't have base access, you provide us your name, driver's license, who's in the vehicle, and they all had the names and everything just went like clockwork. Um, but this was an added feature. It was very well received by those who did it, and we're hoping to do it again next year. You know, if Homes to Suites comes back to the table. Um, <laughs> um, I did not put this one in there, but <laughs> it's there. Um, that is me at 13 point, probably f point 0.5 or somewhere, uh, point oh five. Be <laughs> yes. Well, I saw the finish line. Finish line is about 30 feet past that way. It's like there's a lot of energy left there. <laughs> Actually, I was surprised I was. <laughs> well, when you get towards the end, you get a boost of energy. Um, this here was very interesting. It's an, an, um, this really describes our audience. This is a military spouse hugging her husband after she did the first half marathon that she's ever done. Um, that around that lady's neck is the medal, and I'll show you, I'll pass this around. This is, every finisher received a finisher medal. So if you want to look at that. Um, we have interesting fans. The, I guess it would be on your right, are the Ains Ainsley's Angels. And this is a group that was formed, and they, they travel around to different races, and they've attached themselves to our races. And they get children, they have their family members of children who obviously have physical impairments, and they run the races with them. They run in packs, actually. So you'll see one stroller with a, or carriage with a, a child in it, and maybe three or four, usually Marines, running beside it, and they'll run like a mile or two, and then they'll switch off and things of that sort. And also the Stroller Warriors, which is a pack of runners aboard the base. I don't know if you ever ran with stroller warriors, but you get out of their way. These are mothers who have given birth and are avid runners, and they are fast. And no hills. They, they take their strollers on the beach. They take them up the hills. They did, our, they did one of our partial mud runs, and this woman had heavy-duty wheels on her stroller. I mean, they were off-road wheels, and she just went right through the mud. Um, and the, the, the story about this lady on the left, she was, she's part of the Ainsley's Angels too. She has two leg braces and she finished the course in an hour and I think it was 20 minutes using one of the crank bikes. She was one of the first ones to come across. She's only 13. Um, this here is our partners that we secured. We had Marine Fed, Sprint, First Command, Home to Suites, Olive Garden. Um, Landmark came in at the very, very end of the day, actually before the race, so they're going to be partners with us. We also created, we utilized obviously the Tourism Development Authority. The Sports Commission helped us in getting word out to the uh, running clubs um, that they have access to and spreading the word. And the United Way, we used them for volunteers. Those tents that you saw put up were put up by six Marines um, that went through the United Way and volunteered from 2-8. Like volunteers, we actually had more, but those were the ones that showed up. Um, to help with the branding, the Gr Semperfit Grand Prix Series logo actually was just plain white. Um, to encompass our, refocus our messaging and stuff to attract it to the outside community, we have to add that military aspect to it. We all know what the military is, so we take it, we know what it is. But not everybody does. So what we did is we took the white grand and camouflage it, put some cami in it. We changed the lettering to brown, um, and we added a set of dog tags to it that encompasses the location of the series. Because one of the things is, you just have the series up there, they don't know where Camp Lejeune is. You know, we always just assume people know, so we added that North Carolina element to it. Um, the tagline, the Ultimate Fitness Challenge, once again, just adds to that uniqueness of the, the, the event. This logo appears on everything that we do. This is also um, money that we use from the funding. This is what I call our street team display. It encompasses a tent, banners. Is this the thing that animates? Oh, tents, banners, and tablecloths. And the tent is obviously, um, it's fully printed on. The banners are double-sided, and I'm gonna, you'll get a closer view of this. It's a pop-up tent, 10 by 10. Two people can easily pop it up, tear it down. It's heavy-duty industrial. The poles are probably about like this thick. So I mean, it's not going to go anywhere. We're going to get years and years of use out of it. 
This actually shows the mock-up of the four panels of the tent. So you see the front of the tent has the Grand Prix Series logo with our um, website. You also have um, a show of some of our extreme races, the Mud Run. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. Um, the picture on the bottom is actually our endurance challenge, and it says endurance, strength, commitment. We're using that bottom l balance, I call it, to actually reinforce and draw attention to the words. Um, run uh, shoulder to shoulder with America's um, front, line. front line. That's our pictures of our half marathon. And then we go back to the front of the, um, the tent. What's important when we go to these events is we're targeting events that we know are gonna draw people back to our events. Um, to go to a little sidetrack, we're gonna be going to the Battleship Half Marathon with this tent and display set up there at their expo. So when people check in, they come by our booth, we're gonna have stuff in their bags. And it, even though it's after ours, we're still looking for 2014. That race has always, has a proven record of attracting from Georgia, South Carolina, that extended area that we're trying to reach. So if they're coming to Wilmington, the extra hour up here is not a big deal to them when they're running. So we found that as a target market. It's a good sort of practice race before. Yes, and that's also their practice race, you know, who wants to run, doesn't want to run a half marathon before their half marathon, <laughs> you know, and then you go up to D.C. and you do the full. Um, as an incentive, we try to capture data. Right now, my database for runners that I send out emails to is approximately about 3,000 people. And this I've acquired through online surveys and on-site surveys, and also when we go to these events. That dog tag and chain, or we have one for each one of you here. If they sign up for our for an email listing, we give them one of these. It's it's the giveaway. It's unique. It's different, and people are willing to do it. Um, people don't like giving away their email, but you give them a, a tchotchke, They're just more than willing to sell them up. Some kid signed his dad up, and <laughs> the whole family. Um, so that's what we're using that for, and then that goes into my database. So every time I send an update, anybody who's ran any of our races this year plus signed up, gets these emails that I send out to them. These are the banners. These are two banners. The, uh, it goes front, back, front, back. It shows our mud run, compete with against America's toughest, and the endurance, strength, and commitment. And then we should have one banner that illustrates kind of our, what I call our easy runs. So you have the half marathon, or the um, beach run, and the not so dirty runs. And then the back, get a taste of Marine Corps lifestyle. The banner on the left is actually the first picture is the front of the banner you saw where people wanted to get their pictures taken. I also had this banner at the site of the um, half marathon and we had to shoo people away, not shoo them away, but when things were breaking down and the event was over, they still wanted to keep getting their picture taken with the banner. So it's kind of like, okay, we didn't want to stop anybody from taking it. So we were there for quite a while waiting for them to get their picture taken. But it's interesting how one little item adds that and it adds a lot of affinity to the event. The next banner actually says extreme races. You can't see it because I, when I dragged it over it wasn't good quality. But they also have photos of the different events and then compete uh, um, with America's toughest fighting force, United States Marines. Um, one of the tools we're going to utilize for 2014 also are these club, what I call club cards or race cards. and. There's two different ones, and they're broken up accordingly. We have the half marathon and the remembrance run, which is the Beirut run. We, we changed the name because what we're finding, unfortunately, is the younger generation isn't relating to Beirut. So by doing a remembrance run, we're opening up that race to all, any war, any, any run in memory of someone who was killed or has passed away. Um, so it, it broadens up that, so by opening up that, we're also looking at attracting a wider variety of people who have the affinity of running with the military. So those two races are kind of packaged together. And then the next one is what we call our trifecta. We took the three races that are our extreme races and put them on a card, and we're actually creating a race series called the trifecta, where if you run all three races within the calendar year, because they go month, February, March, and April, um, you'll get a trifecta shirt and a trifecta medal. So it's just another added feature that we do this. The front has the pictures of the, um, the events. It also has, you know, find us on Facebook, and the back has the descriptions, plus the entire Grand Prix series schedule. So we're doing some cross-promotion on that aspect. 
should mention the Marine Corps Marathon guaranteed entries. Oh, yes. One thing that we're able to secure, um, and each year it's a battle, but we, we're going to start doing it, is this year we were able to secure guaranteed entry into the 2014 Marine Corps Marathon. And how we did that is the top male, top female get the, get the automatic entry. And then we did a drawing for three additional entries uh, for anybody who finished that. And that's a big deal for runners. I mean, that's... that's yes. you know, I think this year it closed out <laughs> in 45 minutes. Yeah. Wow. I mean, they, and there are thousands of runners So to in get that a thing. guaranteed entry, that's bound to draw some people. So that's, that was a good point. Um, what we learned, now any of this stuff, like I said, is based on 176 respondents that we had, um, which represents about 20% of the total runners for the event. Um, what we figured out is that there were 49 room nights that were directly related to the event. We use constant contact. So we're a, one of the questions we have in our, and I gave you a sample of what our survey is at that point, is did you stay at a hotel? And if they check yes, I'm able to filter out all those responses directly related to that question. So that's how I can figure out these, these numbers are truly from those who stayed in hotels. Um, we know they brought their families because we, we asked also how many people were in your party. Um, people outside the community are looking for ways to contact with the military. A lot of that is in the con uh, comments I passed out to you about wanting to run with the military. That definitely was a draw um, into our success in, in getting that. Um, and all this was done a lot. We wouldn't have done a lot of this if it wasn't through the association with the tourism advisor, the tourism money, because we wouldn't have done the positive. We would have done business as usual. We wouldn't have forged these other partnerships, per se, because we just didn't have the resources to do that. Um, 2014, I'm looking at even more. I'm hoping to get, you know, if we got 800 this year, I'm hoping for 1,200 next year for the half marathon, if not more. So that's really what I am booting for. Um, the value of social media, we. This was really interesting. Out of the 11,000 referrals um, over the, a 30-day period um, to the MCCS website, 11% or 1,206 came from running sites. So they went to running sites and then came back to our website off of those referrals. And they were betaactive.com, mobileactive.com, runningtheusa.com, and halfmarathons.net and active.com. Um, and they were also the 25 top in the top 25 of all referrals back to our site so we're seeing the value of the social media um, also the social media Facebook alone generated over 1500 referrals and the Grand Prix series has its own um, Facebook page because the value of Facebook is you take that unique group of people that have that common interest and let them interact um, it has 497 likes and it's growing every day um, and actually, they generate as much activity as our official MCCS Facebook page that has almost 11,000 fans. So this is a very unique group that we're able to offer them a platform to talk, to communicate, and, and spread the word. 80% um, of the Grand Prix Series fans were actively engaged with the Grand Prix Series page during that same day period. So there's that definite connection between the Grand Prix Series page and that Facebook page. Um, some of the other things that we'd like to um, just point out, um, out of those night stays, just at this point, just off of those 49 night stays, we estimate a roughly um, impact of $17,000 just off of those 40 night stays. Um, I have this survey going on until um, October 4th, at which time I'll shut the survey down and then we can go back and give you a much greater impact on what this event had. And like I said, that's only the people that stayed in the hotels. That doesn't include the people who came in outside the area and didn't stay in the hotel. So, you know, that's a completely different number. So we can go back and manipulate and, and get more. Um, interesting thing, 90%, 96% of the people who um, participated in the race, one of the questions says, would you participate next year? 96% said yes. And 99% of those people also said they were going to refer it to their friends. So we have a history, this event has a history of putting on a good quality event 
we can we expect to continue on that and we expect to grow on this one of the things we're doing is like i said with that street team is going out to races that are beyond that 120 mile radius and setting up booth getting in their faces telling them about the events and having them come down you know spend the night it's, I know I'm one of those crazy people that'll sign, pay big money, yeah, um, to go to a race, you know. And then you got the whole, you got the hotel night stays and stuff. And to be honest with you, our races are not expensive. They're not expensive, so they're seeing that as a good value and pushing that, you know, train. You know, you're running on real marine training courses. You know, you got this that Camp Devil Dog. That's a real training course. You got the Courthouse Bay. Those mud pits are the same mud pits those Marines jump into and same stench and everything that they go into. People love it and, you know, we're hoping to grow on that. The Marsoc mud run, now Marsoc is, you know, stepping up even more because they want to outdo the engineer challenge. So now you got this battle between the two races. Who's going to get muddy or dirtier and hurt, injure more people? <laughs> you know? Um, so, you know, that's where we're looking at going and, you know, we're looking for great things you know, in, in the 2014 and focusing on that and getting more and more people back here to this community. So Thank I, you, Everett. That was a great presentation. Okay, good. Um, you know, and obviously you guys have been doing this for a long time internally, and I think doing what you guys did this year was extraordinary. And I think it's going to be an event that's going to continue to grow mm -hmm. beyond, I think, your expectations because people that are runners are, you know, very fanatical and they're gonna come and, and they come in different shapes and sizes I, mean, I didn't think i could ever run a 13.1 and it wasn't pretty <laughs> but you did <laughs> and it, was, it wasn't <laughs> pretty i'll admit but what i gave you guys is the um our standard you know our survey that just like i said is it's just a snapshot at this point i also gave you some comments this is where we really gain a lot of information from our runners is the comments. A lot of times you can ask all the questions you want, but until they write it down, mm -hmm. this is where you get the heart of it. And there's a lot of things, you know, from hotel to the finish line, this is an extraordinary event, you know. Really happy that I chose uh, this as my first half. It was phenomenal and I loved every minute. So, I mean, there's some good stuff in here. So it's it's worth yes thank you and i mean it's it's a it was a great event and and i'm personally glad that we supported it i think mm -hmm. the benefits certainly uh, were there and i think it's something that's going to continue to grow and, and bring people here not only for uh, amazing events but also for economic development mm -hmm. for what's interesting they had for us. the general actually passed out some of the awards and people didn't know who he was yeah i mean <laughs> that's, you know, that's a nice little yeah and I mean, I don't know what, what other bases do these sort of events, but, you know, to come and, and, and be shoulder to shoulder with our Marines, I mean, they're, that's pretty cool, you know, for other people that, that, that would want to do yeah, that. One of the things we're hoping to do this next year is actually get some cadence along the route. Yeah. You know, maybe have some packs of Marines doing cadence as they go along and stuff like that. But we were glad to support it. I know that we'll look forward to, to supporting it again this, this upcoming year. And thank you again for joining us. And we thank appreciate you. the information. Does anybody have any questions, board members? Just a comment. Okay. I mean, everybody coming was so excited to be in Jacksonville. And it was nice to see a lot of them had kids and families. And, you know, they all wanted to, you know, eat at the spaghetti dinner. And the kids were running around having a great time. and. You know, I'm reading, and I've also received comments in my um, guest service surveys, um, how they love Jacksonville and love the race. And I'm reading through all of these, and it says it's great. It's my first time. I'll be back. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just really exciting. So, it really is. yeah. And what's nice, if anybody's interested, is the reason that this is a nice course is because it's relatively flat. Right. You start off with I the one in that. Wilmington, you're, you're going to be hurting. Mm -hmm. And but. the 49 <laughs> stays, was that just... 49 stays or was it 49 room nights? 49 room nights. 49 room so nights, what, okay. We were able to count, I was able to filter one room so many nights. Okay. And I had to sit there manually. But, but you know, if you really think about that, it goes beyond just the room nights. Oh, right? yes. you, you factor gas stations yes. and yes. eating and shopping yes. and clothes yeah, that they may need. And, and yeah, to get that 17, we used the uh, 17,000, we used the figures that Teresa provided us that, you know, if they spend the night, you know that it's right. this amount, and then we multi then we subtract out, we book the room, and then the rest of the people we applied the other rate too right. to get the figures. 
Well, it's 49 we didn't have to start with. That's right. And that's only, you know, like we're said, here to do. And like uh, I said, that's only 20% done, so. of our population. Yeah. We still have another week to go, yeah. so I'm hoping that that number will go up. Well, again, thank you very much, Everett, for joining us, and it was a great report and great presentation. As um, Sandy and Betty have come up here, that one of the things we discovered um, kind of at the moment, we needed to do cross-promotion between the own events, making those people who were coming to that pasta dinner mm -hmm. aware that Riverwalk Festival was going on and the New River Palooza exactly. was an available event for their um, activity. So lessons learned, yeah. um, trying to do something from that and where we're having some events on the same day and um, activities as the same day that we can do some cross promotion because the family might have wanted to do, go decompress at Riverwalk right. Festival and New River Police. Yeah. We, need to thank, we need to thank all the volunteers. I know there's yes. a bunch of people that helped out the Spaghetti Dinner, Melody. You, you guys did an awesome job and all the sponsors and it's a collective, uh, collective effort. Yeah. And you know one of, the, one of the things you know that the hotels they could even have like a little bag of like with water and yeah. stuff like that and you know, just little things and with our website we're unveiling the new Grand Prix series website hopefully in mid November that will also be able to cross promote some of the other events as they go there they'll see some of the other activities. Thank you again. We appreciate Thank you. It. Okay, next on our uh, list is the Riverwalk Festival and New River Palooza. I have Sandry, uh, Sandry, I'm sorry, Sandra. I, I'm learning to read, I'm sorry. And uh, Betty, Betty Sanders, thank you for joining us, and uh, the floor is now yours for the update. What we'd like to do if with, uh, would you like to go and roll the video now? Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. So. And you can talk over it and uh, tell us a little bit about what you see or can't see. <laughs> this video was shot by um, um, the city media services and we're trying to capture uh, some more medium from these events so that we can use it in promotion. Uh, Teresa Beecham, we'll hear, you'll hear from her a little bit there, is we've not had a lot of um, activity that we can um, um, used for promotion and things there. So we're trying to shoot in high definition some of these activities and stuff. So. While we're waiting for that to come up, can we just say thank you to our Carmela. I saw you volunteering. Thank you very much. <laughs> Teresa Carter was shoveling barbecue. We thank her very much. On her birthday. On her <laughs> birthday. Uh, Teresa Beecham stood guard with Sandy at the end for security. <laughs> so kudos to you guys and we really appreciate that. Well, perhaps we have a little bit of a problem here, so uh, why don't you go ahead and talk a little bit about the activity and we'll go from there. We certainly thank you for oh, your wait. support. Okay, okay. Yeah. here we go. Are <laughs> right, you going to make this hungry? Yeah. 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 <laughs> These were your cruises that you put on? And your These were the cruises. Uh, George Howard with the onshore surf shop out of Surf City. Uh, with a stand-up paddle boarding. I think she might be doing a knee paddle board. Uh, Second Wind Eco Tours, they came up and did some kayaking with us. We love that. Uh, Marina Cafe, of course, that was their uh, riverboat out there. And then we had yoga by the banks of the river. And that went over really well with the kids and with the adults and with all of the river activities. You could pre-register, you didn't have to, but we kind of wanted to get a feel of what the participation was gonna be. So we did ha ask some of them to uh, pre-register with us for the river activities. Uh, we had, the boat was narrated by Georgie Stone. Uh, she's the author of The Jewel of the New River. Tom Madison did some narrating and so did um, Michael Sanderford. Uh, so Sandy, jump in with me. We've heard that there was probably a little over 6,500. We'd like to say the newspaper was correct with 6,500,000. That might be just a little <laughs> <awkward>. <laughs> But we really like that figure. <laughs> but uh, we had 125 vendors, and uh, we were real excited with the variety of vendors that we had, and that was some of the comments that was made about the, the different things. And since it's not too far from Christmas, some people were doing some Christmas shopping, and we had crafters that had the Halloween things. And the food vendors, I mean, if you, if you wanted it, it was there. And uh, we had quite a lot of hot dogs, that was okay, that's a, that's a festival event right there. But um, Friday night we had um, everyone set up and we had a wonderful band, the entertainers came from Charlotte and they had a big draw with us. And um, you know, really, really nice. Saturday morning, 
to me was the highlight of the festival for me. We had the 2nd Marine Division Band, and they marched in, and they were just awesome. They were so good. I'm so proud to be associated with them that they're, they live here with us. And they were just really good. And we had, you know, entertainment most of the day. And um, we, um, I'll kind of turn it back over to Betty. I had a little eye surgery yesterday, so I can't see. So <laughs> I'll turn it back over to Betty. Well, I think we were all, you know, very impressed. We, all of us being in this military town, love it when the Marine Corps band steps up. So that was the first time I think we had done that in many, many years. So we really appreciated that. Um, Everyone knows we had to cut it short, uh, and just to put that on the record, uh, Larry Shalesky that does our uh, sound equipment for us, he actually got the information from Marine Corps Air Station New River and said that storm was probably going to come in Jacksonville around 5 o'clock. Well, at that point, Sandy and I knew we had to make the call. Safety was the first thing. It wasn't what we wanted to do, but in the interest of safety, of course, then, unfortunately, it didn't come in, and we had to shut down a little early. But uh, we'll live with that, and I think everybody understood that uh, we were doing it for safety reasons, and had we had to make that call again, we'd do the very same thing again with that information. Uh, we did do surveys. We, did, we had more ne we had more positive stuff come in. Uh, the couple negative things that we uh, kind of expected was parking, uh, and, and you know, again, the city stepped up and provided us handicap parking. That was very helpful. We appreciated that. The volunteers came in from the volunteer center. Joe Hull came in with his Marines from Camp Johnson, and of course they're always an asset when you have the Marines helping set up and break down, and when the vendors actually needed something, it was kind of interesting because they would come over and say, could we have some of those Marines with the red shirts or yellow shirts to help us out? So, so that was nice too. Uh, I think all in all, I mean, I was really pleased. The feedback we got was, real, you know, was really positive, and that's always a good thing. I do know we had some people in the hotel, and I will say this to you, home two called me and said, um, there's a dog barking in one of our rooms. <laughs> and she's not really a bad dog, but we have heard it, so could you ask the owner to come over, please? <laughs> so I think that's the only incident we had at your, at your hotel. <laughs> and, and they loved it. Uh, we know that we did have uh, heads on beds in four hotels. Two of them were with you guys, and then there was two other hotels. We don't have the tally on that yet. We're going to get it uh, because we're still doing surveys out now on that. Um, so again, we appreciate everything. Sandy, did I skip over that? We're, we're a flash today. You know, we're going to come back and talk some more, but we're a flash today. Yeah, today was just a, a brief <laughs> update. Obviously, um, we will have a more in-depth after-action report um, at a later date, which is required by by the authority uh, in order to, to you know for the funding. I'd so, like to say something, if I may, about the volunteers that we sure. had. I've been doing this 15, 16 years, and the volunteers that we had through the Volunteer Center were outstanding. There wasn't anything that they wouldn't do, and of course, they, they liked some of the entertainment. We had some belly dancers, and they really, <laughs> they really enjoyed them. <laughs> but you know, they were just, just really great guys. And um, the, the volunteers that Joe Hull provided also, you know, they were down at the river and everything. So. I don't know how you all feel, but with events and different challenges that you have, if it wasn't for our volunteers and especially, you know, the military volunteers who were just like family, you know, they were just really great. And we wanted to thank, you know, you all for giving us the opportunity for this. You know, every time you do an event, it's a challenge. Um, you know, there's some things I know we'll talk, we'll discuss later and that some of the up upcoming events have called already and wanted to find out about you know, like generators, the food vendors had such loud generators that we had to move people around, you know, because they, you know, they couldn't hear, you know, their customers. So, you know, you know, that was kind of really one thing. And the weather, you know, another event last year, you know, was canceled because of a hurricane. So, you know, that was like, like Betty said, our main concern was getting 125 vendors out of there safe and sound. If the storm would have hit, you know, everybody packing up. Someone would, I really believe, would have got hurt. And, you know, can you imagine all the cars and trucks and trailers and everything in the spaces at one time? But I do want to say we have one of the most beautiful parks that I have ever seen. I know I'm probably prejudiced because I work downtown. But, you know, that Riverwalk Crossing Park and the things that the city has done to make the park beautiful. People came down and said, gosh, I've never seen this before. This is beautiful, you know, and that's that's what we wanted too. And the city has done so much to make it beautiful. 
and I was just really proud, honest, to be associated, you know, with the city of Jacksonville, what they've done to help tourism, to get people excited to come downtown. And there's a lot of other events now coming through the end of the year. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just really proud of it. So we want to thank you all. And like Betty said, we will have an in-depth report. But, you know, it just happened last weekend and, and kind of can't see very well so I can't write up anything so <laughs> well, thank you thank you so much and you know a lot of people look at our city seal and and I hope they realize that when you read about a caring community it's more than just words on that seal you know this is a caring community and I've been here quite some time now and I'll tell you, if it wasn't for the volunteers and people that go out of their way because they care, I mean, this community stands up to the call every time. There's nothing that happens here that people don't just stand up and come out and help. And they don't want nothing in return but to be part of, of the community. And that's why we'll never see that tag go away from our, from our seal, because we are a caring community and we truly do care about our neighbors, not only our military friends and neighbors, but just our neighbors in general, and that's who we are, and uh, and that's a testament to it. Um, uh, so, you know, as far as the city's concerned, we'll continue to, to help host these events that give people an opportunity to come out and enjoy themselves, and bring their families out, and have a quality uh, event to go to and enjoy themselves, and that's that's what we're all about. And, uh, so. Thank you for doing what you did, and, and we hope that we can continue to support these events in the future. So, again, thank you so much, and thank you for coming under the, uh, the stress <laughs> of the lack of eyesight. But Betty leads me around, so, <laughs> but she does that all the time anyway, so, so we're okay. Well, Betty, thank you. Appreciate <laughs> both of you. Thank you both for coming. Okay. We appreciate thank it. you. Thank you. All right, the strategic work of the authority is next as we move along, Glenn. We'll be quick, sir. Community branding. Yes, um, we'll update that. We're still in development of the strap line. We're hoping that we can have that completed here very, very shortly. And um, so we can advance, and then they'll be in the design work um, for your art that'll be considered for you at that time. And as um, Teresa and Teresa and um, Laurette come forward, um, there's quite the team there. We're going to talk about the Tourism Promotion Fund. Um, we're going to give you an overview of that. Um, and one of the things that we want to talk to you about before we go into that is about Art Block. And Connie Weiner is here with you um, also. That's on page 21 for the authority members. Um, uh, but. Um, I um, made an uh, error in my, um, my, my slide, so let's talk first about you added on to the agenda, um, the Viamark um, um, contract, and I just want to present that to you quickly on here, um, just so that... That was uh, a separate handout. Yes, it's a separate handout um, in there, in and we, front of you. Yeah, we, we have a few. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but the, um, um, if anyone needs one, we have them right here. But in the, all that reading says that basically we're going to pay the firm $500 a month for meetings, consultation. And I will tell you that um, there's a lot more at the front end than there are at the end. But the end is just as busy as we're trying to finish things up and such there. So about the only low time is about mid-year. Um, we pay commissionable expenses. Um, this was a decision that you folks made early on so that they would get the hundred dollars worth of placements and they wouldn't be discounted any commissions so the TDA pays separately for those you're limited to a maximum exposure of five thousand dollars in there um, for whatever is placed based on the budgets that you put together so that's that's the top limit and then design services this is eighty five dollars an hour we did use this right much last year because as you recall we designed the logo for the jazz in the city um, for the Jacksonville Jamboree. Um, there's another one I can't think of right now. But um, anyway, we did several designs. Plus, this, this design fee takes it for designing things that are not being um, printed, I mean, not being um, placed, such as posters and um, other activities. That's what this pays as it is. So for the consideration of the authority, um, we present to you the annual um, contract with Biomark Advertising. You did approve in concept this early, uh, la late last year as we were preparing to adopt the budget, but in an abundance of caution, we thought it'd be best if we just present you with this contract so that it's real clear and transparent what it is that we're doing. 
Okay, um, we need to formalize the adoption. Um, before you, you have a proposal to the Jacksonville TDA for the contract for Viamark. Um, I'll entertain a motion at your convenience. I move that we accept the uh, proposed uh, document in front of us. I just read it. It's very, I think you got all the items covered. There's a, a ceiling on the design. It may be a little rough sometimes. But, uh, I'm sure that she'll be able to do it for Thank you. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. And now, art block. <laughs> so um, Connie's a little under the weather, but we welcome you to speak there. But I'm going to just summarize for you the document that is included in your agenda at um, page 21. Um, it is proposed um, for the Council for the Arts um, to have an event on April 26th. They would basically block off the area in front of City Hall. Um, artists and their art would be on display, but they'll augment it with some music, some food, and other activities that'll be there. There is no fee for the public to attend. We see this as a future event, much as you had some incubator activities that you funded in the past, we think this is an incubator activity that once they get one or two under their belt, that this could have some considerable destination um, uh, benefit to it as it was there. It does follow a suggestion that the city has been making for some time where we've been asking the Arts Council for some events that are cultural in nature and helps improve the quality of life, so we think that is. And um, the proposal that has come forth to you from the staff that they have embodied in their application that we provided you is an allocation of $6,000 for promotion purposes only. They're absorbing all the other costs from their, um, from their um, general fund and from other activities that they'll generate at the time. We'd like to see if we can help them by incubating this activity by making more people aware of it. So your money will be spent on making people aware. Give them a little expansion room too, don't you? Yeah. Even though we're using the city street, there's not enough room in your workshop over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that's regrettable when, too. But is this was, is this a this, budget amendment? Is this, this would come out of the tourism promotion fund, so we would have to amend the budget to reflect that fund increasing by this amount, and it comes out of your un uh, your um, your undesignated exp um, uh, portion of your two thirds money for this year. You have a, a, a significant amount of money that was undesignated. Thank you. So as okay. part of the motion, we'll need that a budget amendment. The wonderful Dale Mates authorize, would appreciate that. Yes. Yeah. Not only thought authorized, but also a budget amendment. Do I have a motion? Go ahead. Melody? I'll second. Um, I motion to what am I motioning? And you're motioning <laughs> to <laughs> approve to authorize the funding for the arts, the, the Allensville Council for the Arts Block Program, and also uh, to the amend amendment. the budget. But the budget. Six thousand. The six thousand. So sad. Okay. I have second. a second. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yeah. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And Glenn, before I regress, I want to ask Teresa, do you, did you want to make any comments in regards to the Biomark contract and what, okay, you're okay with everything? She appreciates it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, I, I, was, I had that up first on my agenda. Thank you for the relationship and the support of the relationship. It's been, uh, it's been a, a two-way street. I enjoy working with the people that I've worked with, and I think it's benefited you guys and, and what their goals are. And if we could, then she has a report to give you real fast on some of the other activities, if you don't mind her doing no problem. It's a real just, short just report. I just want to tell you real quick, and, you know, the reason we're, you know, we sort of went in that direction is because we feel important enough that all the activities that we support and, 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 and fund, we want to make sure that we have a marketing professional that leads them down the right path and offers the assistance. Yeah. So that they can be successful, and in turn, we can be successful instead of just leaving it out there for... You know. And it gives you a cohesive effort, too, exactly. between all the festivals. And Glenn and I and Carmela, we've been talking about, you know, things to do in the future as we move forward is, you know, cross promotions and some in, in various ways that we can do that uh, as well so that everybody benefits in just everything, scheduling and, you know, handing things out and doing what we do. So um, you want to go ahead or do you want no, me to ahead. jump in here? Go ahead okay. and do your report. And, uh, 
Well, I just thought I would, you know, bring you up to speed really quick because, you know, you might sit here and wonder if I'm earning my keep around here. Mm -hmm. um, but we have been quite busy with a lot of meetings, meeting with the um, awardees of the grant money, uh, of the funding. We have, you know, just to make sure everything's on track and keeping up with that. We have, um, I've been meeting with the event coordinators quite often and trying to, you know, we brainstorm a lot and spend some time together on ways to get more heads on beds, quite frankly. Um, you know, what can we do, different kinds of events, fun things that, you know, people would want to participate in and bring their families in if it's a two-day event or can you do something early in the morning, whatever it is. So I'm certainly available, you know, to them to, to brainstorm anything that comes up. Um, in a di behind that, you know, in order to put media buys together and all that, it takes a lot of of time and a lot of commitment on my part and, and I'm only happy to do it, it's what I do. Um, but leveraging some of the relationships and working more with the television stations and radio stations, some of the traditional media, um, I think will benefit the city and tourism as you move forward with a lot of these events. They're starting to get some really good exposure and the media partners have been excited to work with it, uh, with the programs and they give us a lot to be involved. <clears throat> We've, in particular, I just was going to mention, well, I think Glenn has a couple things on the agenda. Um, we're in the throes of Oktoberfest right now. You'll start the marketing, traditional marketing, as in billboards, uh, go up Monday. So we're in uh, design with the, um, or in studio, rather, with, in production with the radio and television that will start within the next couple of weeks. Uh, so you'll see a lot about that. We've been doing things online and behind the scenes to go out of the market. Uh, for vendors, which of course they would come and set up the night before and do all that, so that creates additional heads on beds. A lot of what we're doing with, with several of your um, events is online, Facebook, social media, uh, doing some um, paid search and that sort of thing, which is huge to those events. We're doing that for Jazz in the City coming up, and it just really gives you more targetability as people are doing things online too with different lifestyles of people. Uh, we're working currently with the, the motorcycle run is this weekend, so we worked with Pat a little bit this year to um, bring on another radio station and to uh, get them to help promote the event. I think the weather's going to be beautiful, so I think they can look forward to some big success with that. Um, Winterfest, we're in the planning stages of that. Uh, we're about to wrap that up. We're working on securing a television partner for that for this year, which I think would help the event grow a lot. And that is a really unique event that people will participate in for miles, I do believe. So um, worked with the Grand Prix, we're working with him current with them currently, and of course the uh, Riverwalk, you know, we did some web design and did all the traditional media for them too as well. So just trying to help everybody, you know, put their things together uh, to have common threads between everything and make sure everything's consistent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I'll tell you, Carmel and I certainly value her assistance in performing this work. So thank we you. appreciate it. Glad to have her. So thank you very much, Teresa. Appreciate it. Um, next order of business is the um, Jacksonville occupancy tax formula adjustment. It's located on page 33. Um, basically, what we're asking for is a motion to adopt the resolution. Uh, that basically codifies what what we would like to see happen and um, and share with our appropriate legislators as we move forward um, obviously we're going to continue to move this effort and it's important that we move this effort for many reasons um, that we've discussed uh, previously so um, is there any discussion on on this item just for purposes of those watching, um, this um, request that's up to two-thirds of the funds that are collect collected would then be designated for destination development or what we call our tourism-related expenses, and the remainder or more would be used for tourism promotion. Um, this gives us the greatest flexibility in how these funds are to be done, and it would have a 10-year um, um, life in which this would do. Uh, this, this varies from the compliant bill provisions, but does so in such a way that we think that um, it would find more approval uh, with those that are watching these types of activities. And, and what this relates to is, as Glenn just discussed, that basically the way we have to spend our money is, is sort of conflicts with our tourism 
uh, funding from the chamber that we spend enough money right now in, in that tourism promotion category that to spend what, uh, what we're required to spend would just be money thrown away, where we could take those funds and use it for capital projects that are tourism destinations, which would accomplish more than just throwing money away in a uh, promotion that, that's just not necessary because we're already meeting that criteria. Um, so it's a double effort that we don't need to waste. We can use those funds to have destination-related uh, capital projects, which we all know we've discussed them here in the past and we support. Um, so again, I think that it's not, it's trying to take a law that it was made for a large uh, population and, and not really made for individual communities and it doesn't work for everyone. Two questions. Bill? It, it went, there were so, <coughs> state legislatures, I won't mention names because that's not what I'm really saying to you. They were receptive to that, whether they, John? Yes. Well, yes, sir. The, the Senate was, and, and what what this resolution's doing is this is now as the, as the General Assembly goes back into session, right. um, this position is just slightly a little different than you had before, okay. and that the words up to yeah. will be the operative words here, so it's not a no, I have no problem with the recommendation at all. Just, yes. I, and the other question was, um, they wouldn't go into session next year. It happened next year. Yes, sir. In it, other it, words, it, it would go into the legislature next year. It, it is likely if the legislature passes it, as I understand things, that it would probably go into effect with the fiscal year. So it would uh, probably okay. go into effect next July 1st. Okay. Well, that will the groundwork. It's too bad it didn't make it the first time. But thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I'll need a motion to um, adopt the resolution as presented. I make a motion, make a motion that the uh, authority adopts the, the resolution as presented, and uh, we endorse that resolution. The okay. council has; they have to act on it also. We are going to put it in front of the city okay. council also. Yeah. Subject to the city council's approval. Do I have a second? Second. Well, could um, you are a separate authority. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, okay. You might want to yeah. strike that because you're not I, I subservient that, to that. I that part of the motion. Okay. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, now we have funding for the Montford Point Marine Association Memorial document. Teresa is going to pass around one of the things that we obviously used her services for was the um, help the Montford Point Marines. You folks asked us to get them some additional assistance and um, we did. Um, they did not have funds to, um, to pay for some of this so the staff took action after consulting with several of you about to go ahead and do this and we're just asking now to reach a consensus agreement as that the expenditure as done was was appropriate and um, can be can be um, made. How much was it? It was about fifty four hundred. How many did you print? A gazillion. About fifteen thousand of these. Now we've and we're they doing were three mailed out nationally. No, sir. What we're doing is these were created. They had a lot of different things, and what we did was consolidated, and we came up with three pieces. This is. A, uh, this trifold is they'll hand them out. They can mail them out, but they'll hand them out. It's for the average person when they go out for solicitations that they can hand out in bulk in different chapters. Was there any thought given about putting them in the Welcome Centers in North Carolina? Well, this that piece is not know. really appropriate for that. Okay. That's now next. This is part of their, okay. the, their destination mm -hmm. um, okay. funding. This is and, for and so we're we're really trying to help them with that part. Well, this is it probably was. something they're going to pass to the other uh, units around the country. Well, we hope point. that they pass it to people mm -hmm. who will write checks. Right. Well, of course, right. that's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. my, go my, ahead and write a check, Bill. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and so we've got two more pieces coming that we're we're putting the final revisions on the second piece, which is a four. Uh, four-page uh, double-sided color brochure mm -hmm. that is for larger corporate donations and up to right. say ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars then we're doing a, an actual a PowerPoint presentation and a nice eight-page presentation they won't be printing an abundance of those right. but those will be for the really large 
I'm glad um, to see solicitations. it. They need some help. Very nice. Nice. Thank help. you. The piece she's speaking of right there is the case statement. And as those that are familiar with fund development, you've got to have a very well, empirically well done case statement mm -hmm. to, to elicit support. So, um, a consensus agreement. Our motion would be both, the, or either appropriate, uh, you know, appreciated. Do by I have staff. consensus? Everybody in agreement? Yes. 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 Uh, before we before we begin, I just want to. Ernie, I was getting worried. You were being awful quiet. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. It's it's <laughs> surprising me too. Against <laughs> <It's> the <laughs> nature. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> this this has been run by the uh, Montfort Pointers. Oh no, we worked right I'll, with them. I'll oh my God! Boy, I just wanted to. Yeah, I yes, just sir. wanted to. Multiple oh. meetings. And, Multiple yeah. meetings. And and you and Chenault and others. And oh, oh yes. yeah, and the, the president. The president. Yeah, okay. he, we've we've skyped him in on the calls. Um, All right. So yeah, he's and I, I'm a, I'm assuming yeah, I, they send it to him for you know final. Right. I uh, yeah. and the reason I asked, uh, Mr. Chairman, is, is because uh, I'm I'm general counsel for the uh, association. Okay. Oh, they Point did by the law. <laughs> and that wasn't in my. You mind. haven't vetted it. I haven't <laughs> vetted it yet. But, <laughs> but in any event, it look, I've just vetted it. <laughs> it looks, it looks pretty good. good. It, it really does look good, good for, for you know for, to get contributions Absolutely. and things of that nature. So I just wanted to to know. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure Should you did. Should I copy did. you on these things, or you can get the uh, you might. <laughs> I would suggest that you yeah. do. Okay. Please. And and it helps you out. <laughs> <laughs> right. So but, uh, and what we did with this, this one looks good. was the the perforated last page too so it just makes it really easy for somebody to contribute on the spot and feel good about it and make it just as simple as it possibly can be okay do I get a show of hands on yay we're good yeah yes. everybody good okay we're good on all that. right and then go, moving quickly then Museum of the Marine I want to give you just a report quickly about their destination development project that you helped to fund I will tell you that um, you asked me to attend some of their sessions and to talk um, intensely um, and deeply with their with their consultant that they had, um, he called me just today. I we have each other's cell phones. Um, we talk, and um, I have um, attended several of their events in July. They had a day long um, um, uh, retreat. I attended that on your behalf. They have followed the guidance. The campaign plan um, has been developed. Um, obviously, there's some proprietary information in there. We did not um, pass that out to everyone. But um, it, it is a, it, it, to me, it appears to be a very good plan and it is an actionable plan. Um, what we have though is that um, you folks ask them to go and ask um, others to fund um, one half of their destination development plan. And that did not occur. Um, your half now will have been um, paid in full at the end of this month. And so they're kind of left halfway down the racetrack and they want to continue going. As a part of that, the Fund Development Council has elected to, for them um, that their fee is going to be based on travel only at this moment. And so what they're asking for basically is for every time they have to come to Jacksonville or go with them on some, some significant calls, they went to Kansas City and Chicago most recently as a matter of fact. So that, that basically you kind of get a, a trip for this. And so we're asking they can do two trips for $5,000 a month. And what the staff is suggesting that you might wish to do is to allocate up to $5,000 for each of the next three months. That's October, November, December. And in November, you would hear a further report as to whether or not you wish to go any further or if there was nothing else to do. But you have you've invested sixty thousand dollars into this project. They have now a plan of action. They have now prospects. They are making the calls on those prospects, and I don't think that you would want to leave them hanging as such there. And so this proposal is before you for that consideration. Thank you, Brian. Board members, huh. being facetious—that's when you call. You got your foot toe in the water and you want to get your whole foot in the water. Well, it was as you folks had well, we hoped no that somebody that. else was going to fund the other half. Yeah. That did not occur. Yeah. Um, and um, you, you all know the reasons that that did not occur. And that's where we are now. And they're going to give us a report in November. We can give you a report in November, yes, as to where they are. Glenn, the months again uh, would be October, November, December. And it was how much? 
Fif it would be $15,000 $5, in total. 5000 each month. And that would come out of, you have enough funds in your, un, um, in your um, undesignated um, fund to do this. Thank you. I'll make a motion that we uh, provide an additional $5,000 for three months with a report from our, from them or knowledge of what they found and how successful it was. I want to know dollars and cents. I really do. I'm sorry. It, just, it bugs me. Now, that should have been dis discussed before to start with and what they're going to spend it for. We were given them essentially 60000 to uh, provide the, the study to do this, but now, you know, it's... Well, well the, the 60000 was paid directly by the TDA to the consultant firm. I no one else got those funds. And um, we, we get those invoices, and Ms. Carolyn processes those, and, and Gail Maid's people well, do it. So the I mean, bottom that, line is that you can't make this presentation without the people that's responsible for the start with. In other words, the people in the museum staff. Okay, well, I, I didn't feel it was necessary for them to be here today. For no, of course that. not. I'm not and, saying and, that. And, I'm just saying that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 feel, I feel comfortable they are now acting on what the plan says do. And they are, they are at, they're right on the verge of some nice situations uh, maturing to their effect at this time. Great. And, and if I may, uh, as I understand, uh, the 60000 that was allotted to them, um, you know, was... 30 this year, 30, 30 out of last year. year's. Mainly, I, I guess, they dealt, dealt with consulting and the marketing uh, yes. aspect it of it. It was all to the fund development company. To the fund development. And we... Um, they anticipated the matching or additional funds coming from another source which did not pan out and if you've ever been involved in politics you know nothing <laughs> is guaranteed so uh, they did not receive the anticipated money from another political body that was anticipated and i'll say that for the record uh, i thought they should have got it but they didn't get it and so now i do not want to give up on what no, no, they've no. done. They've come this far, and we need to go ahead yep. and try to fund them enough since they're on the verge. I agree. And, and I agree with you. Uh, the efforts that have been, taken place in this last push have been significant, and we've been involved. Glenn has attended everything, and we've been shoulder to shoulder with them because we have a vested interest in, yes, in sure, yeah. seeing this to fruition. And, and in my yes. opinion, so did the county. But yes. I'm not. You know, that's a decision for them to make. Right. But well, and if I can, we really, truly need Museum of the Marine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? yes, we do. We, and, we and really do need really that do. here in the city. So. It, it would be significant, in my opinion, to have that become a reality. And oh, I think yeah. we owe it to ourselves to see this thing through. Mm -hmm. And so I agree with you, Bill and Ernie. It's just it's our obligation at this point. Yeah. Um, uh, Lindsay? I do have a, a question. I certainly see the... The benefits um, of investing more. Um, I'd like to know what kind of information or statistical um, facts are going to be in the evaluation in November that will show what has been generated um, from this additional five thousand dollars a month. We will we, we will get you the report then at that. Um, and uh, forgive me, I have not shared with you and Rick then the campaign uh, plan. I want to do that too. But um, you will have the donors and their donor anticipations at that okay. time. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, comments? We did have a motion. Mo we had a motion, have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have a second? Any further discussion? Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, Tourism work by the chamber. Teresa. They're still awake. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> are you there? Hey, Lorette. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Good. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, last month, I, I reported that uh, we were in the process of designing and reprinting a new visitor guide that will be released in January of 2014. We have that design done and we have updated all the changes from the previous guide to this guide. 
What we're looking for now is any new businesses in the last two to three years that aren't listed in the visitor guide. If you will please call our office if you're interested in a free listing in the Oslo County Tourism Visitor Guide. Uh, it is free. We just need you to call our office. Uh, we're doing our best to scout out all the new things, but as all things are, you know how fast this community is growing and how many things have been added. So trying to remember everything that's changed is pretty awesome task. Um, number two, I wanted to commend the city of Jacksonville. They added a new, another new sign to the African American Heritage Trail. The Voting Rights Task Force is now locating at located at Willingham Community Center, downtown Jacksonville. That makes a total of 15 signs so far. Four of them are in downtown Jacksonville, and we expect about five more to be added to this project in the coming years. So um, it has become a huge um, attraction, and we're looking forward to its growth. Um, Lorette, myself, and Donna Hammonds, the uh, executive director of the Swansboro um, Chamber of Commerce, attended uh, the North Carolina Virginia Motor Coach in Pigeon Forge, uh, Tennessee, in September 9th through the 12th. Uh, the three of us uh, spoke to about 26 bus groups, um, and we had um, some pretty good responses. A lot of people interested in the African American Heritage Trail. We had a lot of interest in the uh, base. Um, we had a lot of folks interested in um, Sturgeon City, the Hammocks Beach State Park, those youth groups, Mike's Farm. Um, so we'll be uh, responding to them by the end of the month and getting them all the stuff that they have asked for and requested. Um, upcoming meetings that we have, uh, we will have October the 2nd, the Hotel Motel Association meeting be held at the Chamber. We will have the president of NC20, uh, Willow Kello, Kelly, talking about insurance issues on hotels and rental properties, um, and that's noon at the Commerce Center. Also, I will be attending DMANC in Southern Pines October 2nd and the 4th, so I will be leaving one meeting run and cruising very quickly to Southern Pines to attend that Tourism Leadership Conference. On um, Friday, obviously, I will not be back from that conference, so what we are going to do for our event and festival planners workshop is we're going to partner with Med Day and have our event and festival planners workshop over at the Jacks Mill Commons. So it'll be a um, chamber a tourism uh, city of Jacksonville partnership. Um, and we'll actually bring in the sports commission because Ashley uh, will take my uh, place and head up the events and festivals uh, workshop that day. So a lot of partnerships going on so we could all meet our commitments. Um, and then on October 10th, I will be at Coast Host as the president of Coast Host and Ocean Isle Beach. Uh, figures for July, we collected $343,955.32, which is down 0.64% from last year, which is approximately $2,200. Um, put that in perspective, last year we got a 25% gain in July. So the 0.64%, I know everybody is a little antsy, is not a whole lot down. So uh, um, we're still doing well. And we're still, I believe, the city of Jacksonville, we have one hotel that still has not pay up, paid. So that 0.64 may dissolve once we do get that payment. And that is all I have on Great, thank you, Teresa. Any questions for Teresa? Anyone? Teresa, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Um, Jacksonville Occupancy Tax Collection, Glenn. Uh, we'll go through this at the documents in your pay in your um, in your um, package at page 35. Um, looking at the August collections, we are able to show um, you know this collection. This now was as of September 19th. Um, we have three facilities not reporting 
And of course, we're happy to report the Hampton and its manager here are open. So, I mean, this is the first August that we will have with that as it was at this point. It is not supposed to be 443%, by the way. That's supposed to be 43%. But, um, <laughs> boy, that'd be a great one. Wouldn't it? Anyway, but um, looking at. Good, yeah, it looks great. Wow. <laughs> a little too happy on the fours there. Um, anyway, to the point there, this is for the year to date. Um, is what it is. We're only 2% off of where we are. And of course, I think some of that will be made up by the facilities not reporting. We do have one facility that's in receivership at this time, and then the other two just hadn't reported as of the date. The deadline was the 20th, and we just don't have that report available to me at this moment to, to give you at this time. Um, looking at where the trend was, it was 173. That can't be correct. Anyway, <laughs> we'll go past that. Anyway. <laughs> The Western Boulevard, as you can see where it is, the, the rose colored um, there uh, um, is, is what this um, current month is, and it's kind of hard with two months to have any trend as it was there. But um, I'm happy to see that we have we at least started at a place at Western Boulevard higher than what we were um, previously. And of course, we have to thank again, Teresa, as we say repeatedly, who divided these facilities into these three groups for us. And um, it's, uh, it's really amazing to see how they stayed together until now these other facilities have opened and the Western is just kind of going in a different area now. McDaniel Drive is, um, is, um, is down from where we started last year, um, and, uh, but um, hopefully that'll improve. And the all other areas um, is everywhere else in Jacksonville, and so you see where we are there. As to the aggregate, um, you know, we're kind of matching where we did start last year as an aggregate on FY13, and um, we are we're at least hopeful that that will rise here shortly as it was. There. So, sir, that is a quick report to you on where we are in Thank you, Glenn. collections. Looks like we're staying pretty consistent. And as you said, if everyone was up to date on the reporting, I think about two percent would probably be leveled out. So, again, very consistent collections. So um, that's good news. Um, looking at our committee organizations' future reports and activities, is there anything that any, anyone would like to see a presentation on or report on? Now's the time. Of course, we've already asked about the report <coughs> from the Museum of uh, Marine Corps Museum, so we'll get that in our November schedule. Uh, Glenn, do you want to talk about the potential meeting dates? Yes, we have provided in your package at page 37 um, a list of some potential dates. Um, we, the previous formula that we put together was the first Thursday after the 20th of the month um, at the occasional months that we, um, we met at. Um, we, there were some conflicts that developed, so we had to move a couple of those um, as a result of that. But we put this together for you. You can consider holding these dates for consideration later, or you can adopt the dates now. Um, if, um, if you did adopt them, we're able to, we're, we'll be starting production on the city calendar here in shortly, and we can put those in it. But if you do it on November 21st, that's fine too. You all still have November 21st as your next date of meeting, and so. Thank you. We serve at your pleasure. Um, board members, are you comfortable with uh, agreeing to it now, or do you want to wait? No, I think we ought to be able to put them on the counter, so I make a motion that we accept those dates presented by staff. And yeah. the dates. Yeah. yeah. Now. Move. I'm moving. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Lindsay seconds. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Um, so that is done, and I think we are at the end of our meeting. And again, I apologize. We try to keep these on schedule, but we had a lot to cover, and it was a great meeting and uh, great work from this board. So thank all of you and new members. Thank you for joining us. And if there's any information, I'm sure Glenn will bring you up to date on, on those issues that we talked about. And if there's anything at all you need, please don't hesitate. Okay. I need them. Uh, let me make a motion. First, let me share with you. Uh, yeah, I attended the Oswego County Tourism Meeting last month, and I served on that, uh, that committee for three terms, nine years, and they're doing a great job, and I was pleased to see and listen to the county tourism work at work, and I, I encourage you all, if you want to attend one of the meetings, get a hold of the chamber and ask them when they'll be and what time and so on. But it's very enlightening and it's about 
two and a half hour meeting, started in the morning, had coffee and so on. So on. But I enjoyed being there. Well, thank and you. I make a motion to adjourn this meeting today. <laughs> 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 All in favor? All right. Thank you.